Hey everyone, what is up? Uh, you just took the Airbrush 103 class and this is your refresher. Let's do this. Rock and roll. So we had our three colors, Golden Highlight, Surf Aqua, and Pure White, just in case we need it. <clears throat> in case there's not enough contrast between the colors. And I chose these, these are our highlight colors. And basically we are going to be putting them on in the area where there's obvious highlights. So some of this is gonna be your own personal uh, choice here. But uh, I like to just go start where the obvious spots are to begin with. So maybe like on the hat up here, gonna put a little of the Surf Aqua right up on top. And what I'm looking for with my highlight is it's gotta be quite a bit different than the midtone. Like as far as in, in, uh, in lightness. Or brightness so I want to definitely be able to see it now if you were painting this normally you'd say oh that's not a very good blend Aaron you're doing a horrible job and I would say you're correct unless we have our airbrush in which case I would tell you don't worry about it don't worry about it and then I'm gonna put stuff on obvious places like he's got a couple little so what I want you to do is just basically draw lines don't worry too much about blending in fact Obviously, if you the better you blend, the less work you have to do with your airbrush later. So, you know, obviously if you can blend fairly decently, go ahead and do that. But this is this is like kind of like hitting the easy button. We're going to put these highlights on and then we're going to blend them in with our airbrush. So, I'm going to start where it's obvious. I'm just going to go drawing little lines down the fabric. And I want that highlight to go probably a little bit further than I think it should go. I'm going to bring it all the way down here. Bring this one all the way down. And I just work my way around. There's a little bump right here. Like that. Now I am using my Raphael 8404 paintbrush. You can use whatever you want. Anything that, you know, it doesn't have to be super, super, um, what's it called? What's the word for it? Like a super detail brush. It doesn't have to be super fine tip, but you don't want it like too, like too big of a brush. Like I probably wouldn't use my number eight hobby brush on this. I probably wouldn't use something like this because I'm not going to be able to get a, as fine of a line. But you don't need to, it's not like we're doing freehand or anything. It's not like we're doing any crazy stuff so just keep doing that oh, let me pull my light over a little bit better so maybe this highlight will go all the way down to the bottom maybe this one will kind of catch like that there's like a little lip right here Make these little tundrals of, of light cascading down the model. Maybe bring an edge highlight down some of these big folds. There's a little fold right there. I'm going to hit the top of. And this back side, definitely I'm going to hit up here. I'm like any area that's just definitely facing upwards towards a light source was definitely going to get hit with this color. Even down here. Some of this too, you're going to you're going to want to uh, practice a little bit and find out what, you know, how far you can go with this, like exactly how big those highlights are that you can make and still it looks good in the end. I'm over exaggerating this a little bit so hopefully it you can see it better from the video and stuff. bottom of this cape, inside folds of this cape, can go over like this.
Now technically, um, the bottom part of this cape, see how it swooshes out? It will actually catch some light down there. So why don't we just put a highlight down there as well? But sometimes when I'm painting, I'll actually make a swoosh like this will actually be a little bit darker because I don't want it, I don't want it to det detract from you looking at the top of the model. But in this case, I think we're going to do that. And we can also see how we can darken it a little bit later on in the painting process. Now, these little folds right here are going to get um, a little bit of light as well. one. So I'm starting my brush strokes at the top where I want that highlight to be most evident and then working them downwards and I'm kind of just letting my brush run out of paint like that. See it looks horrible. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Forget about it. <laughs> That's the best I got for Godfather. I don't know. Oh goodness. All right, something like that. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna insist on my color. Remember insisting on color is adding that color again. But I'm only gonna do that here in the upper regions. I'm also going to make sure that it goes down in some of these cracks here. So this is my first highlight. I can I can always do a second layer of highlights, you know, that type of thing. So I'm going to fill in those those folds up here. My highlight color will actually be my shadow color at the very top in the end. Here, maybe I'll follow a fold or two down this. There's a little bitty bump right here. That's one way to blend. Put the paint on, rub off the bottom part of it. <laughs> that always works. All right, you see, we got we got some highlights on there. They're not perfect, but they really don't need to be at this moment. So this is a really cool way of painting because you can actually set in your color values very quickly. You know, take a look back. I think sometimes we spend so much time trying to get everything blended that we forget about our color, the values of our color, the lightness and darkness of those colors, all that stuff. So if I look back, maybe if I, if I kind of blur my vision a little bit, hey, that doesn't look so bad. So. If my vision is blurred a little bit, I can tell that maybe the highlight can go further down on this piece. I like that. So let's let's unblur our vision. And pull that all the way down. And pull this one a little bit further. This one a little bit further. Let's re-blur. I think that looks pretty cool. Now for me, this is just as easy as taking my glasses off. <laughs> oh goodness. For others of you, you might just want to squint a little bit and you'll see it will, it will slightly blur out your vision or just look at the model from far enough away and you won't be able to see the transitions. All right, so we got that. Now, we've got to make a glaze. <clears throat> So again, we're going to keep it kind of easy here. I could go in there and add some shadows too, and then add that to the glaze. But for right now, we don't want to do that. So I've got to grab 
I'm gonna grab my marine teal, which was our base color. Shake that up a little bit. And gotta get a little bit of paint out. My uh, my paint bottles always clog, and I just leave them because I don't care. So I did about three drops of that. Take that off, put it in here. So here's what we're trying to do. Now, when when uh, when I showed you how to do a base coat la layer, uh, I wanted the paint as thick as possible. Now I want the paint. So that was a, like 30 to 40 percent uh, thinner to to paint ratio. Now we want it to be 60 to 70 percent, or somewhere around there. I don't know if it's exactly that, but something like that. So we've got, I've got my thinner here, and I'm gonna put. Say if I had done this normally, that would probably be three drops of thinner. So I'm gonna do. Let's start with 10. So about three times that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we'll mix this all up. And what I want, I want something in between a base layer and a glaze. So a glaze is like 90% thinner, 95% thinner, and just a little bit of paint. So you've got this very, very see-through. You know, you can spray as much on as you want, and it really doesn't affect the paint job at all. You know, it just gives you a little bit of a tint, a little bit of glaze. That's something that we'd use at the very end to... Uh, make our blends really buttery smooth but for now we want a we want like a blending consistency so we want something where it's a little bit see-through and if you if you notice if I do my test here push the paint through I mean it just flows right through those bristles so it passes the paint test no problem but uh, it's probably it's way too thin to put a base coat on it would take you forever to build this up so I'm gonna grab my airbrush We'll load this up. So here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for when I spray this, I want I want there to be a change in my blend after three sprays. That's what I'm looking for. If it happens before that, probably too thick with my paint, and I need to add more thinner. If it happens like if I'm doing six, seven, eight sprays, uh, I'm probably way too thin, and I need to add more of the regular color. So. Start down here. If you notice, I'm using my midtone color, and the reason I use this midtone color is because we made the we made these highlights a little bit bigger than they needed to be. So I want to push them back up until I see that uh, they look pretty good. So here we go. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna spray a little bit on my hand here. Oops. Again, your paint's really thinned out, so it's gonna come out really fast. And I'm gonna spray, I'm just gonna spray right on this one. And we're gonna check and see if it if anything happens after three sprays. Or maybe I'll do this one because it's really low. So I'm gonna come in. One, two, three. And you see it's starting to cover things up. Let's try it on the bigger part. One, two, three. And I'm always, I'm shooting kind of from 90 degrees. I'm trying to get in there, but also maybe 90 degrees and maybe a little bit from below as well. I'm gonna spray a little bit up in here. And usually when I'm doing this, I'm just spraying lightly and I'm just moving my airbrush around the model. So I'm trying to get it. I'm letting things dry and I'm coming back and rehitting it. Sometimes you can hit it a little bit stronger than before. It's okay. So if I was evaluating my blending, uh, my blending consistency here, I think I would say it's a little bit on the weak side. But I am, I am starting to blend that in. You're starting to see these lines are just slightly going away. Now you want to stay fairly close. You see I'm about that far away, three quarters of an inch, half an inch away. I can start working my way right up that highlight. So 
So the cool thing is, since that highlight color was much brighter than the, the midtone, everywhere the midtone hits that's darker, it gets a little bit darker. But everywhere where it hits that highlight, it gets a little bit lighter. So it, it gives you another element of that color. Now, you could just keep going with this and end up with a solid color again, and we don't want to do that. So you want to have a point where you kind of stop and evaluate. This, there, and hit um, the, I'm gonna hit like the back of his hood so it pushes all those highlights forward. Do it on the other side. If you're really careful, you don't even have to mask off any of these other areas. You can just be very precise, see where that precision, precision uh, spraying is paying off. So here's the other thing. Even though we've thinned this down incredibly, uh, it was still clog, it was still dry tip, just like it was thicker paint. <laughs> really weird, it's like a phenomenon that happens with mainly with acrylics. I really hate it, but it is what it is. So you gotta you know, keep continue checking your, your dry tip. Uh, continue doing hard sprays if you need to. So here's where I'm spraying the bottom of this, like completely with the mid-tone color. But since I put that highlight on there, it looks a little bit lighter. Move it right up into the shadows there. I'm gonna re-hit back of his hat here. So what this starts doing is it starts giving us a really, it, it looks painted, traditionally painted, but it's also blended, but in a much fa faster sense. Like, like for me to do this, it probably would have taken a lot longer just to do it by hand, all of it by hand. Hard spray. Just got to be patient. You got to keep going back around, re-hitting areas. This part's super sloppy down here. So you see where I, I was really sloppy with my blends? It's taking me longer to fix those, but I am fixing them. Over time, it's fixing. So what you could do, I would sit down my, my airbrush here. I'm going to grab a little bit more of my highlight color. Maybe I come back in and insist on that color again. So maybe some of that mid-tone color got, went over my highlight color. Now I'm being a little bit more careful and putting that in right where I think my main highlight should be. Be on these little highlights there. This one right here. This is where you can actually start making decisions on how exactly things are going to look. Put those highlights back in. I'm going to put, I lost my highlight right there. So I'm just going to kind of put it back in. Sort of lick my brush off there and feather out the edge. So you've seen because I'm using the paint brush in conjunction with the airbrush, it would be very hard to do this just with an airbrush over my model, you know, over the over the original paint shop. I would have to tape things off, mask things off. And here I just paint them, do a little bit more generalized airbrushing, and boom, 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 boom. Got it. And a little bit more there. Do my highlight up here. So we can have some of these highlights that were going down the, the body of this cloak. We can put them back in right on the edge to bring that back. So my edge is up here. We highlight, strengthen this highlight right in here because I, I pretty much glazed or blended over it. This one right there. So now you see 
Now that the colors are a little bit more in line and looking a little bit more blended, when I do my highlights later, they look more blended because I'm only putting them in areas where it was the brightest anyways. Yeah, we got that. I'm gonna run a nice bright blue highlight down here. Maybe like right in here, the light would catch this fold. So now I just start making uh, decisions on exactly where my light and shadows are going. Again, we haven't really put any shadows in, but that's gonna be coming up in Airbrush 104. And we're gonna really start pushing this thing and really start making some drastic decisions on uh, well, if it's this model that you chose to do, most people probably have a different one that they're painting up. But I'll bring this one to Airbrush 104 too, just so you can see a little bit more. These highlight up there. This little ledge right here gets a little bit brighter. Right there. There we go. Very cool. All right, so we have all those. Looks really nice. Very quick, very quick, very easy. Let's say uh, I'm like, oh, you know what? I want these, these highlights right here to be much stronger going down the side. Can do that. Maybe I want a little bit of white into there. So lighten it up even further to get a little bit more contrast way up here in my highlights. So I'm just kind of using the, the side of my brush to hit those edges like that. Take a little bit more of that, that surf aqua with a little white in it. front of his helmet or hat <laughs> his hood whatever the heck this thing is called I don't know these a bit more up here so you see how quickly this can start adding up. You can start getting your, your a nice blend, some highlights in, boom, boom, boom. Do another one over here, because that was a, the light would hit that part of the cape really well. Is this a cape or a cloak? I don't know. I wasn't born in fantasy time so I'm just like not familiar with this stuff all right something like that we can always come back with our green teal spray it out a little bit and I'm gonna spray it on here again Cover up a little bit of those highlights. Maybe blend out that a little bit more. If you want to be even more delicate, you could actually have thinned this even further. Put in a little bit more of your thinner to make it more of a glaze. Put that in there. And I'm gonna spray this out. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this burgundy wine. It's going to be a shadow color for us. And I'm going to, I'm going to mix it in our cup here. And now we're going to make a glaze, like a full-on glaze. Holy cow, I think that tip was broken. All right, 
So I've got this. This one uh, glazes, I want to be really, really thinned out. So where the other one was about 10, we'll do this. This was less paint, so we're gonna do 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now we're just making dirty, dirty wine water. water. <laughs> dirty wine water, that's what it is. Make sure you get it all mixed up here. One other thing that I think I want to add to this, we talked about additives. I'm going to add some glaze medium. So I'm going to do uh, one, two, three, four, five drops. And hope, what I'm hoping this glaze medium does, this is very thinned out with water. This paint, as Ann Forrester would say, is broken. Uh, it will not lay down evenly anymore. But with the airbrush, it should. I mean, you could just thin it with water if you wanted, and it would probably work. But now we have a very, very thinned out glaze consistency. Very thinned out. All right. So let's let's do another run through with our water. Make sure that that's fairly cleaned out. My spray is is good and strong. Have a strong stream, as they say. <laughs> Anyways, but I'm bump. So now I'm gonna put this in there. Do you remember I used to? I, I talked about when we did the first class. I always transfer my paint with a brush. I don't know why, but it clogs less. It just clogs less. So I have always done that for like the last ten years. I always transfer my paint with a brush, and whenever I don't. It reminds me by clogging. So, okay, so this one, our light source was more coming from this angle. So I'm gonna spray this. This is a, a, a dark, like a dark glaze. So I wanna spray it this way only. And I'm using kind of this kind of motion. I'm spraying and flicking. So you see it gets a little, there's more here. And as I flick, it kind of goes away. So I'm just kind of in a very small way, spray and flick, spray and flick. Now this one, I mean, I can spray quite a bit, and it doesn't do a whole lot. Look at that. It doesn't change my thumbnail barely at all. It's barely changing this. But what this will start doing, it starts building up some of those burgundy wine shadows in the back ends of, of my, uh, my blue cloak here. And that starts making kind of a purpley color because it's the two colors are now mixing together. I can even spray the bottom here. So it's a highlight color, but now it's a purpley highlight color. I'll do the back of his hood here. There. So when I really want to get in close and tight, I'm coming in much closer. When I want to spray a little bit wider bandwidth here, I'm from further away. But also notice, I'm, I'm only spraying from this direction. See how you're starting to see all those colors build up in there? That looks really cool. Some more in the center section of that cape. Some more right there. Now I can always, if I want to go a little bit darker, I'm grabbing a little bit of my black. This is already doing, do as I say, don't as I do, or not as I do. Okay, I can't do that. Let's um, pour this back in here. Spray that out. I'm gonna take my black. And I'm gonna put a little dab of black in there. I just put a little bit. And basically, I'm making a darker burgundy wine. You could put like a dark blue in here. You could do whatever you want. Just something that makes it a little bit darker. Put that 
back in my cup. I didn't add any thinner because that was already really thin. I'm gonna spray out what was left there. So now I've got kind of a really, really dark purple. And maybe we're gonna do it just on the back end of this cloak. Now I'm coming from really far away now. So what I'm doing is I'm having a really, really wide spray. That spray is like, you know, that big as it's hitting. So it's hitting down here and it's hitting all the way up the model. So I'm kind of getting this cascading darkness going up the back side of this model. I can even spray it up on the in the highlight areas, everything. So see how I'm, I'm, a, I'm just adjusting it further and further. So I started with a really bright, vibrant color. Remember what I said about, you know, super saturated colors? They show up like really, really good. So now I'm using that super saturated color as my friend. Before it looked maybe a little bit weird because everything was really, really bright. But now it's starting to look really moody and he's just like, oh, very nice. Actually, really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this color scheme sometime soon because I think this looks really good. Maybe do a couple sprays down in here. I like that. So in a real world, if I had painted the rest of his body, maybe I'd use some of those shadows, same shadow color, incorporate that into his body, under his armpit, maybe under his face a little bit, uh, the backside of his legs, that type of thing, under that hip. And that will start tying everything together because I've got, you know, I have similar colors all over the place. That being said, I can always go back now. I'm just going to grab my original colors, maybe a little bit of that marine teal with, uh, or surf aqua with a little bit of white again. I'm going to insist on our highlight areas again. Here's the other really nice thing. You put so little paint on this, the paint's all dry. I mean, if I rubbed it, I could probably rub it off, but you can touch and start painting everywhere again because you've not put tons and tons of paint down. So now we just re-highlight again. I'm using a really light touch here so that I can get, maybe I come down into that shadow area and just wipe it off. Very cool. Maybe I go back into my marine teal or my surf aqua. I swear to God, I want to say marine teal. It's just in on in my head, on my head. And by the way, marine teal is one of my favorite colors of all time. I love teal. And I love marine teal. Write that down. Just kind of put this stuff in. Maybe I go back down the whole way. And I can grab my shadow color again. So you see where this is going. I just go back and forth. And the more you do this, you can obviously overwork the area. So if I just keep spraying, eventually it just starts all looking airbrushed again and it doesn't matter. But that right there I think looks pretty cool. It's fairly well blended. Maybe an area up here is a little bit not as well blended, so I'm just going to go in and pop it once. I'm going to pop the inside of this fold a couple more times. That one, this one, this bottom one, back here. Now I can go, I can go even another level of darkness, so I can put even more black in there, make it even darker. But I think, I think that looks pretty good. I think that's looking pretty good for right now. I just, I always get exciting showing this because it's just, it's changed. It really has changed my life completely. The way I paint, everything. I thought I was, two or three years ago, I thought I was at the, the apex. I, I was very fast at painting and I didn't think there was any way to paint any quicker. 
And then I started doing this more, started developing, you know, airbrush, paintbrush, airbrush, paintbrush. And, um, and I know that a lot of other people do something similar to this, maybe not the same exact technique, but something similar with the airbrush. And um, so it's nothing, nothing new, but for me, it was, it was trial and error, and I just started playing with it more and more. And I doubled my speed. And not just with my, um, my lower end commissions, but with my high end commissions too. So the commissions that I wasn't making, you know, anytime you do studio work, and most painters out there who know, know this, when you work for a studio, the studio wants the best paint job you can give them for the lowest amount of fee. <laughs> and so I've, I really try to shy away from a lot of studio work if I can. Um, you know, Flying Frog has been really good to me, but they're, they're kind of different. But so anyways, um, I never really made money off studio work. And then once I started painting this way, I actually make money off all my studio work. So that was really cool. And I think the paint jobs look better. So there's that too. So this is this guy. We got him. That looks pretty cool. Now let's take a look at our ogre. I'm going to do him as well. So you got this. And I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm actually going to use my intense brown in this one as well. We're going to do a shadow and a highlight just to show you a little bit of that. So I'm going to put a little of that intense brown on there. And I'm going to block in some shadows. So I think there's going to be a little bit shadowy down here at the bottom. Maybe up this thing right here. Again, I'm trying to be as messy as possible. I mean, not super messy. I don't want to be too messy. I, I want to be able to actually blend this, but I'm going to put this intense brown down in his armpits. Now, if you were smart, you would have airbrushed it this way to begin with, but maybe you didn't for some reason, or maybe you airbrushed a different color and now you're coming back in and painting the skin. And so you had to come in and do a base coat. You're not real good with wet blending, so you just base coated normally. And now you got to blend that all together. I'm going to put this everywhere that I think there could possibly be a shadow. And I'll put it a little bit bigger than I think that shadow would actually go. I'm going to put it along the bottom area here. Maybe just use my finger and wipe it off again. It really does look ridiculous when you start. It's like painting a clown, some clown makeup or something. But as you go, the more you do it, the more it just looks normal. You're like, okay, yeah, that looks like that. It looks horrible. And now we're going to make it look better. Doing that right there. I'm gonna put a little bit in this crack of his hand right there. Maybe in these folds in the skin. His face would get darker on the sides. Down low. In his eyeballs. His eye sockets. When I, uh, my airbrush, or my, uh, my army painting 101 class is kind of showing you how to, how to paint an army, big groups of models fast, but good. And, um, I do, I do a face painting, a 10 minute face painting, and it's very much like this. I mean, that, the face literally looks like a clown face. It looks like you just put some really harsh makeup on them, call it a day. But when you're done, you're like, holy cow, that's a face. That looks really cool. Put a little bit over here on the side of the hands. I think this will probably be pretty close to good. Again, the more you do this, the better you get at calling out like what areas really do I need to put this darkness into and what areas should I not put it in because it, you know, it kind of messed me up last time or whatever. You get, you get better the more you do it. 
practice makes perfect for sure. And it's really encouraging that you have all been practicing. Like I'm seeing a lot of activity in that Discord uh, during the classes. There's a lot of activity. And for those of you who can't make the classes, I see activity after the fact. So that is all. Those are all pluses for me. I'm really glad that you guys are doing that. All right, so we got that. Those are our shadows. Holy cow, that looks horrible. And we'll put our highlight on. So in the obvious places, this forehead, probably be the front part of his head. It's gonna be a big splotch of light. Both of these eyebrows, the tip of his nose, under those cheeks, tops of the ears. You get the picture. Just motor your way around the figure. Don't worry about it too much. Because once once we start airbrushing again, um, you're gonna find that, that you'll be able to adjust these colors too. Like you're like, oh, the highlight needed to be bigger right there. Okay, well, let's just put it back in real quick. Put that right there. I guess I'm on top of there. Skin's uh, weird. It's more like cylinders and spheres and stuff. So I treat them that way, just with big dots of color. I think that looks pretty good in a bad way. I know some of you are just sitting there screaming. I'm pretty sure Rhonda Bender has already had a heart attack, seeing how badly I paint this guy. But again, you can slow it down just a little bit and maybe make your blends a little bit better, put your layers on a little bit better, but you still wanna go fast. I mean, there's no reason to slow down too much. I just get everywhere that I think there would be a highlight. You know, the top edge of those muscles would definitely be catching light. And as I work my way down, got this guy, a little highlight right there, maybe like right there. The one there. Maybe my highlights start getting a little bit smaller. Come around here, in the front of this will be really catching light very nicely. Pecs. Chest is weird, a lot of times highlight it lower than up high. I want this stomach to have, since my light source is coming from this side, I want it to be a big swath of light right there. Maybe it goes all the way down, and then it kind of just fades to the other side. That's the other thing, you can kind of stipple, you can do all kinds of fun stuff here. That, that, that. Let's see how quickly you can go. All right, so we got that. Let's uh, mix up. Let's mix up that color. I gotta get another another cup way across the room. We're gonna put we're gonna put our midtone in. So one thing you've noticed, you'll probably notice, is I, we lost a lot of that midtone. Uh, this model is mostly highlight and shadow now, so we want to bring back some of that midtone. And I knew that we were doing this, so I was okay with that. Bring in that midtone color. Also, you'll find sometimes if these colors are a little bit more saturated, they look really cool too. So like if you were to put a, a reddish a reddish flesh color or something in there, that would, that could look very nice because you're just putting a very small amount on, not a whole lot. All right, I'm gonna sp spray out that dark color. Rinse it out really good. 
I'm actually going to pull my needle back just a little bit, eighth of an inch. Push it back in, lock it down. Now, if you notice, when I put my paint in my cup, I don't start swirling it around anymore in, or anything because there's still wet paint on the edges of the cup, and I don't want that necessarily to mix in with my flesh color. It could. It wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but I want it to. I just don't want it to mix in too much. All right, so now we'll start blending this up. So let's start back here. So I'm going to go into the shadow area. Maybe spray all the way into the shadow area. And if you notice, I actually kind of did a little bit of spidering right there. But it's not too bad because the paint's really thin. So that being the case, I'm going to spray less if I can. Forgot to put my glaze medium in there. But that's okay. I don't think we need it. So with this, since I put that those shadows in, I'm actually hitting from a little bit more of a upwards instead of doing it 90 degrees, because I want I want it to go, I want it to fade over that shadow. The highlight I'm not worried about too much because it's it's not affecting the highlight all that much. It's starting to turn that highlight back into a more of a fleshy color, which is good. I like that. Again, we're just going to start working our way around the model, spray an area, move on. Don't don't sit there and keep spraying because nine times out of ten, you'll, you'll just end up with too much paint on there and you'll start messing things up. You'll mess up your blend, it'll spider. Let's get the back of this head a little bit, right up to the front. Maybe on these fingers now, I'll actually come in from a shadow area because I want the mid-tone to be the shadow up there in the front. Really just always be paying attention to uh, what you want to have happen. So pay attention to your angles all the time. If you want it to cascade over the, over the shadow, then you're going to have to come in from above. If you want it, you know, if you don't want to spray from above on the highlights, you want to come in from a little bit below, but you're going to have to get in close so that you don't hit the shadows too much. Quite personally, I usually just spray over the highlights altogether. You could even come back a little bit and spray from a distance. Start getting a little bit softer spray. And then we come back right in the middle of all that and maybe reapply a couple of these highlights. You could even uh, sort of speckle it in like dots, stipple. You see that a lot nowadays. A lot of people are doing stippling and it looks fantastic. It's, it's, I think part of that is people are getting really good at glazing too or they're using their airbrush to kind of glaze and knock things down. Uh, this is not necessarily our, our shadow color that we did on the last model was definitely a glaze, but this is not necessarily a glaze, but it's it's kind of close to it. Let's put it that way. We'll hit some of the tops of these highlights on the muscles we hit those
just like this. See it all starting to. This looked horrific when I started. Now, a few minutes later, it's starting to come together. Pretty well. And we haven't even used that many colors. You can, the sky's the limit here. You can use lots of different nuances and tones in, in your uh, flesh colors to get different, uh, achieve different effects, you know? Be more artsy, less artsy, more cartoony. It doesn't matter. You just, you just do it. So, do a hard spray there. We're gonna put another glaze on of our blending spray. Sometimes you gotta remember, all of this stuff is obscuring the, the, the layer below it. So it's just like putting a glaze on in, you know, by hand, except it goes on much more evenly. You have more control. And in my opinion, it looks better. And it's way quicker. So that allows me to spend a lot more time on other things, like a tattoo or something. But remember that if you if you're planning on spraying some shadows from below, also uh, that will obscure detail too. So you only want to obscure obscure detail so far. So up on top, you're okay because you're really not going to have any of those shadow glazes coming in. But down below, you could actually like right here. I'm leaving that a little bit bumpy or not quite blended as well because I know that I'll come in and spray some shadow colors and that will that will cover that up too. And if I cover it all up now, it's just gonna end up looking airbrushed at the end. And the key to this is, I think the key to airbrushing is not, not to know that you airbrushed. That's, that's the key. I think that's the key to any kind of painting. It doesn't matter how you did it, it just matters if it looks good. A little bit more of this highlight color right here. I'm only going to take this so far. I think you all know where this is going. I think you all know you're ready to practice, ready to rock it. I've got one hair. It had a clump of paint on it and was driving me nuts there. Not anymore. Missed that face. Let me clean my nozzle. These lighter colors, especially flesh, that will that will that will start giving you dry tip and clogging your nozzle real quick. The other thing I think you're going to start getting good at is realizing like how bright of a color you need to put on there to get the effect you want. I'm just spraying down that face a little bit. Now you could, you could come back in and put uh, airbrush or highlight color on there, but I, I usually don't do that because it usually starts dulling things out. It's really important to, I think this, this blending color needs to be that mid-tone color, big time. I got that. Too, too awfully bad. Like you could actually bring in a much more yellowy toned highlight, and then when you spray the mid tone over it, it will, I mean, it will just pop like crazy. So, um, this is one of those places where you really need to experiment a lot. All right, we're gonna go back into my shadow, my shadow glaze, and I didn't even clean out my cup. I'm just, I'm just gonna go punk rock, put this in right over the flesh. Shadow coming out. I'll spray it on my finger. Looks good. So 
This is the same color we used on the, uh, the little guy. I think purpley colors look great in skin. Just going to throw that out there. So we're putting this really light sort of glaze of purpley color. And I actually sprayed it up over the top of his stomach there. It is purpley, but purple has red in it. And so that gives you kind of a little bit of that life kind of color. If I just put a little bit, if I put too much, it's going to start looking like a zombie. If I just put a little bit, it just looks like a shadow. I see a lot of, you know, high-end, top-tier top painters. Uh, they'll have straight-up purple in their flesh tones. And they just put it in a way that's subtle, and it looks really cool. That's starting to get a little bit more... A little bit better. And what I would do is I would, so I'm doing really controlled, really small sprays right at the back of his head where his ear is. It lets me build up that color much darker, much darker in his armpits. I think that looks kind of cool. Spray it at the very bottom, uh, right, right in between where his his uh, shorts here, his pants, whatever those things are. We'll just start going for much, much more contrast in that hand. That looks fantastic, really, really cool. And see, I just start going back and forth. I've still got, I mean, you can see where I've got some problem areas, but I can continue cleaning that up, switching between my flesh, my flesh color, putting in highlights manually, all that stuff. sprayed the bottom side of that of his chest right there I'm gonna do the back of his head because why not so a little bit on the side of his head right there where it curved so I'm just reshaping his head like literally reshaping it there you go What do you think? Not too shabby. And this is this is the base coat. <laughs> now you can now you can start painting him. I mean, you can put in some more texture in the skin. You can pick out some wrinkles, some freckles. Put a cut in there. Uh, everything. Paint those eyes super cool. But you know, just getting the skin on is actually not so bad. My OCD is kicking in now. So let's. So you could actually put some glazes in. So I added a little bit of water to my highlight color. I'm gonna glaze up in the highlights by hand. So this will this gives me a nice little glaze up there. Kind of tie in all those highlight areas. Be a little bit softer. Okay. But I can be much more precise because my my highlights need to be much more precise. And that's something that's going to be very hard to do with your airbrush. So I just don't worry about it. I don't worry about trying to put in this one final little dink highlight. Now maybe as you go, you'll start realizing that, you know what, I think I can do that with my airbrush. And if you can, great. But I think this also gives it the painted look. I think that's super super important. So I can start I can start doing little things like maybe he has a wrinkle right here, goes across his skin like maybe from an old wound or it's just a wrinkle on his back. So that goes like that, it goes across. He's got some other ones this way. So you see where I'm starting to build up other details very quickly. 
And this is super exciting to me. So I am I am really excited to see where you all take this information and what you do with it. Because at the end of the day, I want you to all be successful painters. I want I want you know, it feels really good when I paint something and I'm like, I think I want it to look like this, and I just do it. And it wasn't always that way. You know, for a long time, it kind of, whatever happened, happened when I painted. So even even on my contest winning pieces, there was always those that element of, um, well, surprise maybe in what actually came out at the end. It never really did what I wanted it to. But now I'm starting to find that, that the paint does exactly what I want it to. And I do it much quicker. So put these on there like that. All right. I'm going to leave it right there. I think you all get the picture. Maybe not. Maybe I'll maybe I'll leave it right here. <laughs> oh, I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. All right. Okay, I'm done. This is it. So, there's your review. Uh I think I think that works out pretty good. Um thank you for coming to my Airbrush 103 class. Let me move that light. Whew. These lights are hot, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Liz is over there sweating like a shfeaster. I don't know what that is. Anyways, um, I will see you next week in Airbrush 104. Practice, go paint something. All right, see you later.